Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here, and today we're looking at this interesting dual M2 SSD docking station where you can plug in two SSD drives and connect it to a computer, your uh, Steam Deck, your Asus Ally, whatever. And you can use pretty much any different type that you want, be it one for the Steam Deck or a regular full-size one. It covers a lot of them. If we open up the box here, which by the way, they sent this to me free of charge without any expectation of positive review. This review is my own. So we're going to go ahead and open this guy up. I hate these things. They, they never, they're supposed to just tear off, but they don't. Okay, here we go. So here is the main unit itself. Very attractive. It's made out of metal. Very heavy. Well, not super heavy, but heavier than, you know, plastic. Uh, the proprietary power brick. Don't love that. USB-C to USB-C. Okay, right? That'd be plugging into a MacBook or something. And then USB-C to USB-A. Perfect. So you got all the bases covered. And of course, you have a very thin, multi-language, uh, simple starting guide here, or user's guide. Um, not a ton to see here. I mean, if you've ever used an external drive enclosure, you plug the drives in, you plug them into the unit, and it reads them. But there is a little surprise about this unit. It will do an offline clone. Yes, yes. See how it says source and target? Put a drive in either one, a source and an empty one in target, and using the copy button, it should clone the whole drive over as long as the new one's bigger than the old one, right? Very cool. And it does it all offline. No computer needed. That's outstanding. I love that. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in this unfortunate proprietary power uh, plug. And you'll notice that there's no on-off switch, which kind of sucks. So you're basically hot swapping these all the time. Probably wouldn't recommend doing this, even though I did it several times, uh, because I know that, uh, that users are going to do it too. So I've hot swapped these a few times without any sort of problems, but I would probably recommend putting this on a power strip where you could turn it off or unplug it beforehand. All right, this, uh, this looks okay. You can see there's a blue light for either side. I'm assuming it will also show transmission. And I push the copy button and it flashes, but nothing happens. Hmm. You'd think that the button says copy, you'd push the button and it would start copying, but you can see the lights aren't blinking here. So we're not doing anything from a copy persuasion. And I'm assuming that these would be flickering or blinking, showing us how far along it is. At least 25% would start blinking. So we need a trip back to the manual. And uh, we'll, look, we'll look at this manual together here. And uh, you know how these manuals are, right? I don't know if necessarily English was the first language of those who were putting these together. Um, but it basically says, hold the button for three seconds and you should see a copy indicator. And I do that, but it doesn't actually start copying. It, it, that, that should be the copy indicator, right? It turns out in order to get this thing to work, you have to hold that button down. Now I'm assuming it's about three to four seconds. I held it just a bit longer here. And then once I released it, I tapped it again and it started copying. There you go. If you came to this video to figure out how to make the copy work because the manual didn't help you, please like, subscribe, hit the bell. We appreciate you watching. But you can see it's starting to copy now and you get this cool little um, visual indicator. You can see both drives are working and it's showing a copying process. Now we're not gonna sit here and wait. Um, and I will give you some speeds on this device later on, but it was remarkably quick. It's USB, uh, it's USB-C 3 for when you want to do rewrite operations from a computer, but on board, it's very, very fast. And you can see here, it's all lit up. It's pretty cool. And uh, it gives you a good idea. You can have it across the room and you can see if it was done copying or not. It doesn't make any noises or anything, um, but you know, c'est la vie, pretty good. All right, now you can see it's done. All of the lights are filled, showing that the copy process is done and both blue lights are out on the drive. So we've got a clean copy. Now we're gonna use our Steam Deck because that's probably what you're going to buy this for, right? You wanna clone your Steam Deck drive from one to another or upgrade your LCD to an OLED. This would be a great way to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the um, boot menu here, holding down the volume plus and tapping the power button. And we should see two drives here. And we do. There are two drives listed here. We could decide which one to boot from. I'm assuming that source is one and target is the other. Hard to say. We'll be able to figure this out in a minute. So we're going to go ahead and boot from this. Now, this is booting from, there you go. It's the source drive. This actually has a full version of Windows 11 on it, which I just cloned over to the other one. And you can see it's moving along. You can see the standard Windows is loading circle. 
and it's it's hauling butt right now. I mean, that's a nice fast load. If you ever booted off of a micro SD card or a USB C adapter, that was really quick. I didn't I didn't accelerate that at all. There was no cuts or anything in there. It went right up, and you can see, of course, you know, Windows 11 has a moment or two that it has to finish its boot. Um, but once everything sort of gets in here, it's super snappy. It works great. I mean, this is this that is my 256 gigabyte I pulled out of my original uh, Steam Deck. That's what's currently in the source port right now. That's running Windows 11. Now, just to make sure all is well, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the original or the source just to make sure that the other one is a perfect copy. Now, you're going to have to take my word for it at some point, right? Because this could just be another Windows 11 boot drive, but I assure you it's a perfect copy. And it didn't take very long either. You can see one of the drives is missing, so we'll choose the one that is available. And you can see the flickering light. Yep, we're definitely getting our access here. And let's wait for her to boot. Okay, so far it looks like the times are about the same. Again, it's USB-C 3 uh, Gen 2, I believe. So you should be able to get, what, 10 gigabits per second out of this thing? We're going to do some speed tests later and we'll throw a screen up for you. This actually looks like it's taking a bit longer, this Rocket 1 terabyte. The other drive was definitely a little bit quicker. But it is a perfect clone all the same. And there we go. Let's take a look at some speed numbers here before we wrap this up because I know you guys are going to want to see that. We'll do that from the Steam Deck itself. Now this is a niche device. Not everybody watching this video is going to need something like this and its usability does have limited use cases. However, it's under a hundred bucks and uh, if you need some great way of cloning, it's great. If you're looking for just a way to read these drives on your Windows PC or your MacBook or a laptop, your Asus Ally, it's pretty much a standard interface. I hope you like what you saw. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. I think this is a great little device if you have the use case for it. Otherwise, you might give it a pass. I'm Shane R. Monroe. Thanks so much for watching and take care.